Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Angie. And, and together, together we, we are, are Twinfinity. We are Twin Flames back with another question and answer video. It's actually been quite some time since we answered your general questions. If you haven't watched it, we did last week. Last week. Last week. It feels like forever ago already. We did a question and answer just from the masculine's perspective. Rob was the one answering questions. I was the one that got to read and ask your questions to him. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link somewhere. I don't know which side it shows up on, but I will put a link up there for you so you can watch that one because it's worth watching. And also, if you haven't watched that one, just to know you guys inspired Rob to do a whole series. So he's going to um, take more of your questions because he has lots of them and start doing more videos all by his lonesome. I won't be in these videos. I might still have her around as a technical producer. <laughs> Because <laughs> someone's got to set me up. I'll be in the background. <laughs> I don't. I don't think she has to be completely invisible. She can be around. Okay. So for tonight, to, it's a little bit of an odd night. Today has what been one of these busy days yes. that we all have in the three D world, where yes. where I come home about ten minutes later than I normally would. And then I've got badminton to go to tonight. I've got on my badminton shirt, my black and red and white badminton shirt. You're not wearing blue. No, I'm not wearing blue because, well, when, when this video comes to an end, I'll probably wave by and then Angie, Run out the door. Angie will hit stop. And within 45 seconds, I'll be in my vehicle blasting off to my badminton games. That's just kind of how life works. I think we all understand that. Yeah. So, yeah, I got home a little bit late and uh, we both had done just a little bit of shopping today and had both got some purchases so we had to show each other our, our treasures we both got some used stuff that we both needed so that was all sorts of fun and um yeah so um after walking the dog i shouldn't say that too loud or else we'll end up having to do that again yeah i say the word we have to call it w we can't yeah say the can't, word. can't call it yeah okay i just did yeah yeah oh well gosh she's not paying attention no she's just all happy to be snuggled down by our feet because we're down close to the floor and she's learned to recognize this pattern of oh <laughs> we stop and sit on the floor for a certain amount of time so uh yeah we've got about 54 minutes left to do what we would typically do in an hour and 10 minutes but we're not gonna hurry we're just gonna have fun doing our video and for once i didn't pre-read the questions i mean i read them a while ago when they were asked and i save them in a word document but i have not read them recently so i'm gonna wing it like rob does and i haven't read them at all <laughs> i hope we're not tripwired by by, <laughs> by fancy translation <laughs> programs that sometimes tripwire me <laughs> so, hopefully we'll be okay okay <clears throat> first question <sighs> Share more on how you didn't feel each other for like three or four years, but then started again. Aha! That's a good question. And how it felt to feel each other, but still be separate from physical union, especially for years before coming together again. Also, synchronicities. If you experienced emotional changes with them over the course of time, example, at meaning my twin, it was an eye opening and helped me feel aligned and on the right track. Mm -hmm. Then in the early times of separation, it helped me immensely as it showed me our connection and helped instill faith. Then in later times of separation, I felt angry and sad because it was it was a reminder that we have this connection, <laughs> but are struggling to be in a place where we can be together. It starts to feel like they were lies or tricks or something else like that. Like it just, you begin to wonder what you were told by spirit. Oh, huh, yeah, I know that one. Ah, then you get back to see your twin again and they smile at love because it all shows the connection still. Wow. There's a whole lot of question in there. Let's go back to the first bit. Yeah. It says share more on how you didn't feel each other for, for three or four years, but then started again. Yeah. I often wonder I what, what really happened. From my point of view, um... I've always respected my connections to the to the past, whether someone was a schoolyard bully or whether it was a high school fling. I've always I've always appreciated the people I've had in my life, and having Angie out of my life for an extended period of time, it it grated on me. Like there's 
there's people that are not in my life now that I could almost rank from, let's say, from one to two to three to four to five of who I would like to be back in touch with again. And I, uh, Angie was always near the top of that list. Oh. But it was, it was also hard to get a hold of her. I've always had a little bit of faith that she would possibly get a hold of me first. And I'm not sure who broke the silence after three or four years. It was me, because I was in town. I had moved away. Yeah, you came back. I was just in town for came, work. Came back to town, so. so. I was just contacting just friends. You were one of them. So, yeah, when she got back in touch with me, it was an instant, of course, in the back of my <laughs> mind. And then, of course, secondarily, it was, and how? She <laughs> just can't drop out of sight for a supper. So how did you feel? What, what, what did you feel during those, during those four years? Did you think I of us often? I did not. And I've said this before in videos, <clears throat> and I don't mean to sound mean, but I did not think of him hardly at all. I forgot so much. Like, I even forgot his middle name. I forgot his birthday um, when I said goodbye and I was moving away, to me it was forever. It was, I never thought I'd see him again. Or if I did, it would just be, you know, quick and passing. But, um, yeah, didn't really think of him. But the question is also, like, how did we feel when we came back in touch and started to feel each other again? So, this is where it was interesting in my situation. I... Um, had was just starting a relationship with the person that actually became my six-year karmic relationship. So I was just starting into that relationship shortly after I moved back to Calgary, shortly after I met and saw Rob for the first time in like three, four years. So yes, there was still feelings when I went to dinner with him, and I won't lie, I even had hoped and wished he would kiss me, but he didn't, which was very honorable of him, considering he was in a relationship. But I still had that thought. So clearly there was still something there for me. Obviously it wasn't gone, gone. But then once I was in my relationship, I, I again, went years without really thinking of him. Um, we would have the odd text of like a happy birthday or stuff, but that even wasn't until later on, like, I think we still, after we met for dinner when I first was working here. We probably had another six to nine months of silence right after least, that. At least, if not a couple, I was going to say a couple years. But I, I hadn't forgot that. Angie got back in touch with me. I now had a pathway to be back in touch with her. And I was not letting go of that. I even wrote it down analog in a book that I have. Of how to get a hold of her, just in case I lost my phone or it got drowned or anything. I I was not going to lose that connection again. The things you learn when you do videos, I didn't know that. Wow. I've I've still got a Aww. pencil and handwritten address book. Aww. I did that once. I lost my address book when I was only I had only been in Calgary for a couple of three years, and I lost some people from my former city of Edmonton. I I lost them forever. There's just no way I was ever going to find them again because they'd moved and I'd moved and you know, it was just done. And there's a few people who I've never found again. Hmm. That wasn't happening. Now, I'd like to go back here again. What does it say? How that felt to feel each other but still be separate from physical unit, especially for years before coming together. So it didn't feel hard at first, but... Probably three years after I moved back to the same city as Rob, that's when it started. I started to think of him more often. I even Googled his name. <laughs> I didn't even know what I was looking for. I just Googled his name, and then I did find him. I found out where he lived. I found out where he worked. And then I went to his work once just to say hi. Do you remember that? I stopped in, and I still remember what I was wearing and everything. So clearly... <laughs> There were still emotions there. Even though I was in another relationship and I was happy in my relationship at that point. Granted, it was still incredibly challenging. There was a lot of ups and downs in that relationship. But overall, it's not like I was thinking of leaving. But that pull, right? You just, 
your soul is always yearning for that person or not even the person it's it's the soul connection that it's yearning for so even though i was in another relationship yeah the thoughts were there the were they for you i've been thinking about that while you've been talking uh, i i did not understand therefore did not feel any thoughts about having a 5d connection but just the constant reminders i think was because i was getting impulses of connection back and forth between us i had i didn't really recall that anything in particular was triggering uh memories like it wasn't like i was going by the apartment all the time or anything else like that or going by a specific mountain that meant anything to us i would just i would just think of her odd random moments hmm. yep maybe a song about telephone numbers would come on on the on the radio and i'd go oh yeah that's usually how i remember things hmm. but this was a little bit different this was just randomly i'd be driving down the road and, and thoughts would wave back at me interesting okay so what was the second part again synchronicities if you experienced emotional changes with them over the course of time for example the same thing that was uh let's say in early times it showed me the connection or or helped instill faith and then later the very same connection and synchronicity would create anger and sadness because it was just a reminder of something that was now stalled. Yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to think of something. Do you have like any example of that or thought of that? Yes, I do. And even to today, every time, we drive by the spot that we saw the reverse sunset. <laughs> it reminds me of that moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the reverse sunset moment for me is mm -hmm. always going to be that. Mm -hmm. So when we were together, it reminded me of that. When we were not together, it reminded me of that. But there was the sadness and wondering where you were, especially when we were in the long years of our not being in connection. So... Yeah, I'd, I'd run a full gambit of emotions. I didn't really have the anger emotion because I, too, had accepted that we were never getting back together yeah, again. We, was... we might cross paths sometime in the future. Maybe we wouldn't. <clears throat> you you could have been lost for a lifetime, and I wouldn't, wouldn't have been surprised. So I wasn't angry, but, yeah, there was always the, gee, I wonder where she is now bits. I, I still... To this day, that reverse sunset at that point is still the most significant spiritual yeah. moment that, that I think I've ever, that I have ever experienced. So, I was always going to be reminded of you, and it just be in the context of what kind of communication we were in that it would remind me of with certain emotions. Yeah, I get it. If if you don't know what the reverse sunset is, we won't go into details on that, but it was just this magical experience we had the very first day we met. Um, it's in our story videos, which again, if I'll link it just so you can watch it if you want to know more about that. Um, for me, I would say it was music. Songs like uh, Dan Fogelberg. Yeah. Anytime I heard Dan Fogelberg, I would think of you with sadness. Um, um, what's the other one? The Eye in the Sky. Yeah, I mean, Alan, Parsons Alan, yes. Alan Parsons Project, Eye yes. in the Sky. Yeah, anytime. Still, when I think of that song, I feel sad. I feel just devastatedly heartbroken. That's and the, I'm like, we're together. Yeah. Why are you sad? Some of these songs are twice as old as the people that are, <laughs> That's true. That are watching this video. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so, yeah, there was there was lots of things. And quite honestly, I never, ever, ever could go back and read my journals because... There was so much devastation and there was so much stuff oh. like my angels told me we would be together. They told me we had a mission. They even used those specific words. And so when none of that happened for many years, clearly it has happened now, but for all those years that it didn't happen, I couldn't go back. I never once opened my journals because I was just too afraid to go back and even think of that stuff. I almost had to erase it from my mind to move on with life. I had to just shut all of that out and 
class it up to it was what it was move on but yeah I understand when you have these synchronicities and stuff and then all these emotions of but you know this was supposed to be or why wasn't it what I thought it was yeah it's hard but then you never know look at look at us <laughs> we thought we were never gonna be together and here we are just has just never know what magic the universe has in store. It has this ability of putting things back together. Yep. Spirit's amazing that way. Yes, it is. Was there anything else? Yeah, there was a final sentence, but we actually covered it. Oh, okay. It was about uh, did Rob get any signs or reminders of you while while you were apart all those years? And uh, yeah, that reverse sunset spot. I just. Yep. Yeah. It would help if I didn't drive by it 15 times a year. <laughs> 15? Probably more like 50. Well. From the amount you go up to the mountains. Yeah. I don't always come back from the mountains or go out to the mountains via that road. Oh, okay. Not always. That's true. That's true. Okay. Good question. Next, next question? Yep. Oh, this one's a little bit longer. Yeah, and I usually sort of edit the longer ones for him, and I didn't. So I told him, we're winging it tonight. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. My twin and I are stuck since two years. He is married and sees this connection as an impulse to me and says that That's interesting word. not many people have this impulse and that and if it is there, we should enjoy this connection, which is real. And says that 3D reality is what it is. I see the connection as growth and change of human relationships. And tell him that I'm not going to enter any marriage. So yesterday we met again. And again he did not understand. I did not want to experience love. He says that it came to us in the moment it came. And him being married with two kids and, and I being single. I see it from the point that he is offering me to be his lover. So I sent him a, a what's up? Oh, yeah. That's, that's called a what's up. What, what's up? A what's up. It, it's like texting or messaging. Okay. Yeah. This is why we proofread stuff. <laughs> and Rob's not a tech guy. That, that's, that's my area. Making a comparison, if one day his daughter would be in my situation, maybe I should not involve his daughter, but... Here in Spain, men are very, uh, oh, machistic. Yeah, ma ma I don't know how to pronounce that word properly. Ma like macho kind of? That's the way I take it. Yeah. I want the best for the daughter, but I don't care about what, <laughs> what they ask or do to other women. Okay. That he should think about what he would like for his daughter and according to his outcome, meaning the conclusion he has he had come, that this would be, wow. This is why I normally help yeah. him edit a bit. This would be like having his daughter and any other woman are telling him that we should be in charge. Be the change oh, sorry, we want change. to see in our children's relationships. His answer was, obviously, we have a completely different perspective. Hmm. So let's go back to the beginning. Okay. He sees this connection as an impulse. And that 3D reality is what it is. I see the connection as, as a growth and change of human relationships. And that I am not going to enter, enter any other marriage. So this is... I, I already see a, a typicalness in this. But this... This is a little bit different than typical. Hmm. Usually one person is trying to discredit the connection, especially if they're in another relationship that they feel they must stay faithful to. Because they they need to discredit the connection to protect themselves. Right. And yet the other person that is not in a relationship is not willing to get into any other relationship because they see that this connection is what they want and need and they feel that it is their destiny. Yes. Ah. And the one that's married often 
has, and this is like one of my soul sisters, a common thing that her twin and other twins say is, I made my bed, I have to lie in it, right? I chose to marry this other person, even though I have a connection with you, even if I don't understand what the connection is, I have to stay with this other person because I feel obligated to. And that's, that's okay. They might not even understand on a soul level that they need to be in that relationship or for a reason, but that's what's holding them there. It's not just their 3D integrity, their 3D values, their humanness. It's on a deeper level they're being guided to stay there because there's still work to do there. So if you can just surrender to the journey, I know we all love that just as much as we love the word patience, but really what you need to do is just honor that they are where they are, allow them to be where they are, and know that they're there for a reason, they're there for a purpose, and their soul will call them back to you when the time is right, when they've done the work they've done. Again, to go back to the video we just did last week with Rob's stuff, we were saying that Rob was feeling a pull to leave his relationship four years before he actually did, but because of divine timing, he he knew, even though he didn't know on a conscious level, he somehow knew it wasn't time yet. He had the opportunity to leave that relationship and go into another one, and he still chose not to. Because on some level, he knew he wasn't ready to go. He still had work to do. So if you can trust that your twin is where they need to be for a reason. But I think there's also more to the question. There is, and, I, and I, I've got all the, the, the words are all there, but I'm going to jumble up the words okay. and re-portray the question. <laughs> but I'm going to use some of the words directly that they were. So, there's this portion of the question where I see it from the point that he is offering me to be his lover. Right. So, he, so in other words, he doesn't want to let go of the connection. He maybe would like to keep the connection as a lover on the side, is yes. the way that I read that. Yes, exactly. But she is coming back saying... Well, imagine if you had a daughter that was in my shoes, what would you want her to do? Right. That's what the whole question is asking. And he's coming back saying, we obviously have completely different perspectives. Wow, that was that's a really good one to, to corner corner the masculine with the what would you do if your if your daughter <laughs> was in my position? That's that's really that's really a good head-on way of of meeting that. That's almost like saying I don't want to be your lover, and and what would the world think of me if I did? Mm. And what would you think if someone you loved was in my position and and took that role? You would be wanting more for their life than just to to just be a lover. Ah, that's a very very direct way of saying that's not good enough and that's also a real a real tough way of throwing the other person right into a situation where they have to really think about it for more than just their own perspective that really throws a lot of humanness in it that's that that probably collided very very harshly in the, in the 3d for that for that gentlemen hmm. it really really would so she's saying at the bottom what do you think about his point of view and the situation I I really think that it was both brave and there might be cultural things I don't quite understand mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. taking that tact hmm I've been to I've been to Central Europe and South Central Europe, Mediterranean Europe. I've been there three times now. And their view of family is different than what we have here. Yeah, very culturally different we, in some of those places. In, in North America, we wouldn't think of, of hitting someone with that because our, our family values are not, I don't think they're any weaker, but they're not, they're not so emotionally ingrained. So to have to have done what this lady did as far as putting him on the spot about questioning his daughter, 
I really, I really do respect that because that's a, well, what if? Would you, do you really accept that for more than just your own, for your own way of dealing with not being able to make a decision? Right. And are you comfortable with, with your own, I'll say lack of integrity, that might be a judgment because who's to say that's integral? Who's to say that monogamy is the highest value? Maybe it's not to him or maybe, maybe it's not a bad thing to him. Or, or maybe it's just such a bad tug of war that he just can't think clearly. That happens too. Yes. And I will say it's quite common, especially for the masculines, but feminines too. I'm not, not wanting to point out one or the other. But it's quite common, especially for masculines, to have affairs and stuff like that. Because what they're doing is they're, they're searching. They're like, I've married someone else, but there's still a piece missing. And they don't consciously understand what it is. They just know this other person fulfills something that nobody else can, even though they know it's not time to be with them yet. They don't want to let them go. We struggled with that for quite some time. Both of us would be in other relationships and still come back to each other long, long time ago. But it's something that you have to work out for yourself. Only you can decide. Are you comfortable being a side lover or not? You know, nobody can tell you what to do. Nobody can tell you what's right or wrong. Because in my opinion, there really is no right or wrong. There's only what's right or wrong for you. My personal bet is, is that this person's willing to put this guy on the hot seat. This person wouldn't put themselves on the hot seat. This being a lover bit is not going to happen. <laughs> this, this guy is going to have to make a decision. So many people spend a lot of years beating around the bush trying to get someone else to make a decision but they do it in such a soft way that they never have to make a decision. This, I bet you this decision's made in a short amount of time. Well, and when you are always there for them, um, I think we answered a question similar to, not similar to this, but to my point that I'm going to make. When you're always there for them, that tells them that you'll always be there for them and that you have no boundaries and that you're willing to just give whatever they're willing to take so, yeah, good on you if you're not willing to, you know, just be there whenever he wants you. If you want a full committed relationship, that's, that's telling him what your values are and where you stand. And that puts him in the place of making a decision. Do I want to be with you? Do I want to be with this other person? Because you're, you're saying you can't have both, buddy. If anything, once he gets done trying to sort out this this conundrum of what ifs and do you would you really expect that of someone else you love to 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 be in that routine? If anything, he won't be able to question, as Angie said, he wouldn't be able to question your integrity. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very it's it's both a simple and a complex question at the same time, but to throw to throw somebody's family right back in their face at them, wow! Well, that, that's a very wise thing to do. I like that. I did. Yeah, I like it's it. A whole twist into things to let them think on a whole different level. Ah, okay. I'd like to step on from that question because I think that there's going to be questions in the future that are going to loop back around. I think I think people are going to comment on that question to the point we might have to come back and try it from another couple of points of view that are also going to get expressed. Possibly. <laughs> so this part is just to kind of explain. This person sent a long email and I just put in brackets a little bit what was explained. So you can read the first bit. Okay. Then. So <laughs> she was basically saying that she feels her twin and gets signs and dreams all the time, which I know a lot of us do. <laughs> and even when she tries to pull away and focus on herself, like, you know, how many of us say that that's what you're supposed to do. Um, she's like, it's not enough. I feel him in the bathroom. I feel him in my body when I'm doing things. Um, and she's like, I just want some peace and quiet. 
Is this a test? If it is, or if... Is it still triggers? Ah, yes. Is it a sign to act on something? I don't know, but I don't want to miss the sign of it. Does this happen because of getting some training beyond balanced? Or, sorry, some training staying balanced. And the last thing of that question was definitely part of the answer. Yes. Um, the universe, we're always going to feel them, experience them, even if you go through, you know, like our journey was, where we had years where we didn't. Even when you do again, it, it is partly practice and staying balanced, staying grounded, um, knowing that you can stay centered even when their energy is there. Because this journey isn't about forgetting them and moving on with your life and going, well, the hell with you. Because they are you. You're connected. You're always going to be connected. You, you can't forget them no matter how much you try. There was a comment here. I just want some peace and quiet. <laughs> There's lots of people that are probably saying, Hallelujah, yes, I could use some peace and quiet too. you got to remember as a corner of manifesting, though, what you focus on, which might be noticing noise. Mm. If you focus on noticing noise, you're going to continue to notice the noise. It's going to continue to drift by you. Uh, I think one of the more healthy ways to deal with, with the thought that if you can't turn down the noise, if you can't get any peace and quiet, if it's if you're always in some form of contact that's that's constantly annoying you, I think it would be better to work on stepping forward with learning how to accept the connection so that it doesn't have to keep screaming at you to pay yeah. attention. Yeah. Sometimes it's better better to make peace with something than to, than to try to push it away. And isn't that brilliant? She's wanting peace and quiet. To get peace and quiet, you need to make peace. You need to make peace to get peace. Yes. And don't forget again, with this connection... The more you pull away, the more the energy of the other person is going to come back at you. Maybe not physically. It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to start phoning you or texting you. But you're going to feel their energy because of that balance, right? It's that push and pull energy. So when you stop pulling away, they stop needing to pull or push back. The energy will just flow. So the more you are in flow, the more you are in balance, which is why the last part of that question is perfect. Yes. It is a help in helping you or a help in guiding you to stay balanced. So the more that you can have thoughts of them or memories of them or dreams of them or an experience of them without it knocking you off your center, that's when you know you're more in balance. I'm sitting here just a little bit dazed because last night I sat down in the in front of the computer mm -hmm for about an hour and a half, which is a long time for me to sit in front of a computer and type out stuff. Yes. I did the equivalent of a little bit of journaling and uh, some would even call it channeling. It almost felt like it last night because wave after wave of wave of For how fast you were typing, it was like channeling for sure. I don't type fast. Mm -hmm. I use four fingers, sometimes six if I get my thumbs all going in there too. So yeah, fast. I was ripping away at about probably 18 to 20 words a minute. But that was really fast for you. That is very fast for me. But I just minute after minute after minute, I just about couldn't keep up with all the thoughts that were coming to my mind. And I was typing away on the thought of when you've accepted your journey, accepted the thought that you're a twin flame once, that, that connection, that understanding doesn't need to go away to learn other things. People are trying to always change their connection with spirit. But once you have a connection with spirit, from within that connection, it can become whatever it needs to become. But you can't make it really go away because the connection, once it's made, it's part of who you are. Yeah. So for people that are fighting with their connection, where they are not at peace with their connection, where their connection seems to be seems to be on their case all the time, it's probably because they haven't gone with the flow of their connection, learned what they need to learn, and 
tuck it away in their back pocket, and to use that word again, be at peace with it. It's very hard to change a connection. It's not so hard to use that connection, to which the intent, intent of it actually being in existence to begin with was created, usually by creator, or at least the opportunity was there, or was accepted before we came here as part of a soul contract, even if that soul contract was with creator, not necessarily other souls. You've got to be able to take those connections and take what is being, to word it bluntly, rammed down your throat <laughs> and actually accept it so that you can step forward. So if, if I hear people saying that, that they're just always being annoyed by a portion of their connection, chances are it's because they're stuck there, mm. not because it's trying to annoy them. It's trying to move them. <clears throat> And they're refusing to move because maybe it's not something that they believe that they need to listen to. Spirit's a little bit wiser than us. I've, I've learned that myself. When things annoy me, I tend, to, I tend to embrace them to make them fit as opposed to pushing them away. Yes, that's such a perfect word. Embrace it. Because like Rob was just saying, right? The more you push it away, the more it's going to push back when you just embrace it and you don't even have to you know put so much thought or effort into it often what I do when I get an experience is like that I'll just go thank you universe and then move on thank you for the experience thank you for the sign thank you for the memory thank you for the feeling and then just let it go instead of thinking about it and being annoyed about it or frustrated or I want peace but I, I will also say it's not just that easy because Actually, it is that easy. It's us that makes it hard. You it's know, our human it's self that true. makes it hard. Yeah, the human, the human self trying to analyze why this is taking time or why this is being annoying. It's the human side yeah. that's getting in the way of the 5D effort. But what I mean is that I don't mean to just be flippant and say, well, just acknowledge it and move on. It uh -huh. is that simple, but it's because we're human. We have human feelings. We have human thoughts. We have human expectations. We have human ego. The more we grow, the more we evolve, the more we surrender, the more we then release the ego and can live in the spirit side of ourselves where we can just allow things to flow instead of having the push and pull and the energy and the forcing and the resisting. So it is just part of the practice of getting balance. You'll notice the more that you can just acknowledge whatever comes up, whatever memory, experience, thought, feeling, emotion of the other person, the twin, the more you can just go, thank you, and then move on, the easier it gets. It's like anything, right? Practice. Learning isn't necessarily easy. So when you have to learn to step forward, uh, sometimes that can be more effort than what you want to put in, but yeah, there's also a price of not stepping forward. You can choose that too. The noise probably won't go away. Hmm. So what I would suggest is when you have an experience of feeling him or thinking of him or whatever, just acknowledge it. Again, this is what I did and I still do with different things is just acknowledge it and then go thank you for reaching out to me. You know, like I, I would talk to Rob in my head all the time before we were together telepathically. I would just say, okay, thank you. I, I hear you. I feel you. Or I'd even ask him, what is it? Like, why can't I stop feeling you? Do you need to tell me something? Is there something you're trying to communicate? And then telepathically, he would communicate back. Or for you, it might not be telepathically. It might just be you feel, you get an intuition. You just, like, understand what's being communicated or what's being tried to be communicated. So... Instead, just, instead of considering it to being uh, spiritual noise connectivity noise if you have a gratefulness journal journal maybe spend a little bit of time just being grateful that there's noise at all there's lots of people that would love to have some noise yes so be a little bit grateful yes. for it thank it for being there yeah and maybe uh maybe let it know that it could take a little bit of time for you to understand for you to understand why it's there but yeah give it a home give it a home oh that's nice give it a home Okay. I like that. By the way, one of these fine times when I've written or typed out three pages worth of stuff, I should 
grab a paragraph or two of that and just throw it out there as a post because once in a while I do like what I type. But, but I, I'm really bad at doing snapshots. And then I'd also have to take my raggedy 20 words per minute with spelling mistakes all through it. And actually, I have to probably correct it all so that it be, could be cut and pasted. I will help you. Spell check's a wonderful thing. If it interprets what I've done. <laughs> Another question? Yeah. yeah. We still have a little bit of time left. Yep. Uh, I would like to hear about the portion of the journey for the divine feminine that happens without the divine masculine. Mm. Hey, you get a question. <laughs> you don't count for this one? Apparently not. <laughs> Yay. I'm sure you will. Don't worry. Life in the long separation, after we walk away and decide to choose ourselves and focus on ourselves. Doesn't yeah. this tie in with the last question already? That portion of the journey. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering if you could talk about, uh, or tell me about, the physical, the physical structure level up with the divine feminines after going into se separation. There's not much of info on it out there. I'm still purging monthly. Oh yeah, still purging monthly at least. <laughs> if not more. And, the, and so there are other Divine Feminines I'm friends with. They're purging months too, apparently. We're still on this journey, just not looking at our Divine Masculines. But I still feel like we need some directions about what this portion of the journey is about and what to expect. Much love, respect, and appreciation. So, so, the portion of the journey that happens without the divine masculine. I'll let you have the question. Wow, I good. get the clipboard and everything? She gets the clipboard. I don't usually get the power of the clipboard. And I get to lean more in front of the fire and take some more warmth. <laughs> Maybe stretch out my oh, feet I because... Oh, I you were just snuggling. See, you always end up in trouble. There's no answer <laughs> to that. Okay, so I'm going to, of course, just go by my own experience. What I think, let me just make sure I'm, I always like to verify that I'm answering the question correctly. The physical structure of leveling up after separation. I don't get what that means. In other words, like, you're, you're doing the growth. This is how I interpret it anyway. You're doing the growth. You're, you know, you're working on yourself. You're trying to become the best person that you could be. Uh, I need. I feel like I need some direction about what this portion of the journey is about for me and what to expect. It, so that's it's, the it's, challenging thing. I don't know what the journey is for you because we're all on our own journey. Just by reading the question, it sounds like the person is in a healthy portion of their journey. It's not like there's any any huge amount of conflict. They're just wondering what they're supposed to do. But if they're growing with themselves and they're not focused on all the um uh, i don't want to use the word trauma but all the drama of trying to be in connection with the divine masculine that's oftentimes one of the more healthy times of this whole journey is when you is when you're focused on other things that without all the without all the clutter without all the interference hmm. And so oh, sorry. Are you Without all the noise, like as per the previous <laughs> question. There you go. Yeah. Um, what I would suggest is, you know, we, we often talk on this journey, not just we, but many people often talk about focus on yourself, you know, all of that stuff. But what does that really mean? I'll, I'll tell you what it meant for me and what it still means for me is do things that you love. So find out who am I? Because often most of us have come from some sort of trauma we don't know ourselves very well. We don't know what we like. We don't know what we don't like because often a lot of us are codependent. So we're living our lives for someone else. So start really doing some soul searching. Um, ask yourself those questions. Who am I? And if you're somebody that enjoys to write, I would even write those out. Who am I? And then write, write everything that comes to your mind. You can even... If you're not a writer, you can dance it out. You can sing it out. There's no wrong way to explore yourself. But that's the key, and those are the, the words that I was looking for, is explore yourself. Get to know yourself deeply, your human self, your spirit self. 
your entire self, get to know your body. And I don't mean necessarily just sexually, but, you know, get to know like what, what causes me to get sick. You know, for me, it took me a lot of years to realize when I got sick, it was always throat that, that it started in. And that was because I had a lot of um, throat chakra trauma, you know, growing up in an abusive home, I lost my voice. I had no way of feeling empowered to speak. So I had to do a lot of healing around that. So examine, you know, when you get sick, why does that happen? Where does it come from? Or when you eat certain foods, what feels good? What doesn't feel good? All of these things, your physical body, your emotional body, your spiritual body, get to know yourself on all levels. Explore every bit of yourself. I feel like you have something to say. No. Nope. Okay. I have lots of thoughts. You're probably hearing all the, all the, uh, yeah, all the clutter. I'm feeling, in I'm feeling like, it's my turn. <laughs> nope. Okay. Um, and find out what your passions are. What are your what are your things that you don't like? You know, get to know everything. I, I, I feel like I'm saying the same thing over again because I don't have the right words at the moment. But just really explore yourself. And it's great that you have friends on the journey because a lot of people don't have friends nope. on this journey at all. But number one, they have friends on the journey. And number two, that they're in the same place as you. That's so perfect. Go out together, talk, not just about the journey, but talk about girl things, talk about guy things, talk about everything, right? I mean, as girls, that's how we, we love to heal. And I shouldn't just say girls, the feminine often are the talkers, we're the emotional ones. We like to work out our problems by talking, by communicating, by sharing. So yeah, spend time doing things, get hobbies. Um, develop interests, go to movies, do things for you that give you joy, find passion in life. That honestly is what, and I know your goal is not to bring your twin flame back, but that is what does it, is when you are passionate and you feel whole and you know yourself. Because when you're whole, you attract wholeness to you. And what are twin flames? We're the same energy. So when your energy is whole, balanced, healed, you'll pull that same energy back to you. So yeah, just take this time and enjoy it. Le learn to flourish in it and love life. Do things that excite you. Do things that bring you passion, joy, peace, love, serenity, all of it. And a lot of that is about still remembering to feel. A lot of times when we close a door on something that's that's obviously not working for us. For example, when you when you're in that long separation and you don't really want to hear it, and you close the door on the connection for a while, oftentimes you close the door on all of your feelings, mm -hmm. not just the ones you want to close out. Yes. So when those feelings are rattling on the door, maybe sometimes open it up, let them come out, let them play, understand that they're there. Maybe see as you know if, if you haven't if you haven't had feelings about the connection that you that you know is there, whether it's a connection with a divine masculine or even a connection with spirit. Sometimes people have to have to take a little holiday from dealing with spirit every day. <laughs> but yet still the the connection is still there so when when it comes back to you even though you're in separation from what what those feelings should be play with them let them be see if see whether or not they feel any different after a few months or a few weeks or even a few years of other growth sometimes they might come back and you might actually have a better home for them boy i'm really feeling homey tonight <laughs> How am I gonna leave home and go I play badminton when I'm when I'm just so I'm just so homey well, today? Let's be homey. Yeah, got Angie here and I got my fireplace there. How am I gonna cope with these feelings when I'm supposed to go out and play badminton? It's almost the same thing. I get to come back home. Do you know, your your comment was such a good point. See, this is why we do question and answers together like this, even though you say the questions for me. You came out with such a good answer that I hadn't even 
touched on. I was talking about, you know, feel all the joyful things and the fun things. But yes, part of part of the alone journey. Sorry, I got to move. I got a cramp in my leg. <laughs> part yeah. of um, things is is feeling everything, not just feeling good. You, I mean, that you can't deny what's there. You have to feel what you feel. So yeah, honor whatever is coming up. And allow yourself to be in every moment. And the more present you can be in every moment, the more you expand yourself, the more you heal yourself, the more you balance yourself. So be present with whatever is coming up. Is there anything else? No, I don't I don't think so. It's it's interesting when someone describes a healthy portion of the journey and says, how do I do this? Just don't stop doing what you're doing. And I think the word of, um, you know, not knowing what to expect, that's great because there's, there's really nothing to expect. It's just allowing what is. It's just being in the moment. I'm shaking my head because last night I capitalized one word in my whole essay. And that word was expectations. Mm -hmm. It's expectations. I, I'm off on a tangent, folks. Expectations <laughs> is often what trips people up. Instead of taking the journey as it comes, they get all these so expectations. Funny. What's a twin flame relationship supposed to do? Why do I have soulmates? I expect this of them. I expect that of them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's all these expectations that set people up for letdowns. Like, because these expectations, entities that are in our lives are meant to cover the full gambit of life mm. if they're only just going to touch just little corners of it what are they going to teach you what are you supposed to learn from them if they're not supposed to touch all angles of your life so sometimes sometimes your twin or your divine partner whatever you wish to call them sometimes they're going to trigger you trigger you in the worst way sometimes they're going to trigger you in the better ways so sometimes it's all about learning what you're not balanced in and other times it's just a reward for maybe other times where you have learned mm. when maybe you can accept them better so what to expect is something that really comes down to balance and healthy expectations you're going to have to expect that there's going to be some rough times. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to expect there's going to be some good times. You can expect to learn. That's one <laughs> That's one thing I haven't got around. And grow. Yeah. You're, you're going to grow because that's what we're here as a soul to do. Growth and learning, that's <laughs> one that we tend to not be able to escape. Yeah. Whether, whether you choose to see the growth and learning from a, from a positive or a negative point of, point of view. As long as you're learning somehow or another, I can't take that away from you. Yeah. Now, I would like, if you are good with it, we have like 10 minutes. We had a, I would we, like we, to we, address this last question. You'd like to actually do it. Yeah. Uh, I have actually glanced down while you were talking, trying to trying to see if I can cheat just a little bit and get ahead and, and have this question more or less ready to go in my mind. I don't get it. It looks okay. like that, it looks like that. This is a question, and, yes. and the other bit here. I, I will work. actually read it because I had a very lengthy conversation with this person, and um, more came out than what what the question actually says. So it was actually a really good question. Okay, it's all yours again. I get the clipboard again. <laughs> Two in a row. Okay, so this person says, Hi, I was wondering if you could comment on this one question and answer, or sorry, comment on this in one of your question and answer videos. I'm curious of your thoughts on this person's perspective. And I just put in brackets for clarity. It's concerning um, about false twins and narcissists, but I did not read that at all from this person's post. So, so continue on. A person had posted in one of the Twin Flame groups on Facebook this comment. There is an invisible magnetic force between Twin Flames. Twin Flame connections have an unexplained high intensity. Twins have a strong attraction to each other, but there is also a strong repelling force between them, similar to that of magnets. Think of yin and yang, fire and ice. 
Twin flame relationships are intense and are often marked by passionate sex, explosive arguments, and multiple breakups and reunifications. Twin flame bonds are of an extremely high voltage, with a love energy so intense, the usual breakup and the suffering that follows is also predict predictably extreme. So she asked my opinion. What did I think? Did I agree with this? Did I disagree with it? And I said, I, in my own experience, I agree with it. I said, Rob and I never really had the explosive arguments, um, but we definitely had the multiple breakups. I mean, we only yeah. broke up officially once, but... There was the back together and sort of not together and sort of together. For years we did that. Years. Which I know a lot of people on this journey to. Where she was looking at this though, is she was disagreeing with it and saying to her that didn't sound like twin flames. That sounded more like a narcissistic connection. And she felt sad that this information was being put out to the public because it was telling people that it's normal to expect explosive arg arguments, multiple breakups, um, intense connections and suffering and extremes. So we had a, a huge conversation and I would actually, I've been wanting to do this video for a while, but I'm learning again, honor divine timing. I, I'm going to be doing a video soon and I'll be explaining how divine timing has helped me do that video at the right time. But anyway, I do want to do a video about twin flames and narcissists and false twins and catalytic twins, all the different names you can put on it. The fact is, though, it doesn't matter what relationship you're in. It doesn't matter what label you put on it. If you're in a relationship or in a connection, it's there for a reason. It's there to teach you something. So... Um, the gist that came out with this woman is, you know, she said, I've been with a narcissist and it was very much like what this is describing. And I don't think it's right to be putting that information out there and calling it twin flames. But twin flame connections and narcissistic connections can actually be very, very similar, which is why a lot of people call a narcissistic connection a false twin flame because it feels like a twin flame in a lot of ways. And I was right there. I... The one that I was saying that, you know, I didn't think of Rob for years, I was in that connection. It was a very narcissistic connection. And um, while it was the hardest relationship I've ever been in, there was a tremendous amount of benefit. I don't regret it at all. And um, I know we got to go. No, no, I'm not not concerned about that at all. Keep okay. on going. But I do have I do have some comments in the wings. I okay. got, got my fingers crossed. That's called my reminder that I have a comment. Yes. So, yes. Just to go back, you know, I don't want to lose the whole comment here of, of this whole thing of Twin Flames. There is a strong attraction. You can be very strongly repelled from each other because the strong attraction is your souls recognizing each other going, yes, we are the same energy. The repelling, though, is when the ego stuff starts coming in and it pushes you apart because now you're seeing all each other's traumas and that is pulling you apart from each other so you can heal those traumas. So that, in my opinion, is very true of Twin Flames. Very similar to magnets. Absolutely. You put the, is it the positive and negative of magnets that go together? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you need that balance, right? If you have the negative and negative, you're going to repel and we have a set of magnets I keep forgetting to bring them down with us for our demonstration of that but anyway you know what magnets are like and then it says think yin and yang fire and ice absolutely because your your strengths and weaknesses aren't always in the same place you need those balances you need the masculine and feminine energies um, marked with passionate sex that's very common yes Explosive arguments, again, I can't say for us, but it is common because, again, when the ego starts coming out, then you get that headbutting a lot. And it can be common to have explosive arguments. Angie and I have learned ways we've got, I, I'm not sure if we've got trigger words, but we do have trigger emotions that we can see in each other where we know we've stomped on the other person's tail. <laughs> and... Angie and I, I believe, have really become very attuned to that. And as much as we'd like to keep on stomping on the other person's tail accidentally or not, we've learned to stop. 
because there's just no benefit to it. So Angie and I, I think, have learned how to not keep pushing the other person's Oh, buttons. definitely. But that's practice, right? That it, takes... it, it is practice. I'd like to comment on that whole thing put together. As you were reading it, I was just, you know, looking at the screen, listening to the words. Oh, the crossing There's over our hour, hour mark. There's our hour mark. We get an hour mark in our computer. Oh, wow. We don't even get to come back. There we are. There. We well, thought we lost us. We're like, oh. You probably didn't see anything different. We yeah, saw lots different on the screen. <laughs> so I actually like this whole this whole rant that describing the twin thing, the twin flame feeling from the point of view that most people do feel the extremes that this paragraph talked about. Yeah. And this paragraph to me was saying, hi, this can be an extreme journey. Oftentimes it is. If you're feeling this, consider it to be more normal. This paragraph is a pat on the back saying, it's okay to feel what you're feeling. Don't, don't take it as a big negative sign. It's normal. It might not feel that great, but it's normal. So it was actually, I consider this paragraph to be a consoling pat on the back for those who have almost been unnerved by the extremes that mm. can happen within a twin flame connection. Yeah. Now for others though, if it is a trigger, yes, it's going to remind them of the narcissist of the false twins and all the other and all the other negative connotated mirrors that get thrown in our face. Well, and it did for this person because she was saying my twin and I don't have explosive arguments. We never have, which like, is similar like, to us. Yeah, we yeah. we don't. And and she said, but I have with a narcissist. So she said, to me, this sounds more narcissistic than it does twin flame. And again, that's because everybody's journey is different. You're going to get in your experience whatever it is that you need, which is why it's so hard for people to define. Is this a twin flame? Is this a narcissist? Yes, we have all the videos out there of, this many signs that this is a twin flame. And hey, we just did one of those ourselves. So um, it's really hard to say that it, that anything isn't a sign or is a sign. There's only trends. And especially when it comes to narcissists. And I know that's a trigger word for a lot of people too, because some people are like, well, they're not, you're not a diagnoser. You can't say who's a narcissist and who's not. And fair enough. And totally fair enough. But the narcissistic experience is very common to the twin flame journey but when you understand that it's a blessing to the journey, and this is where her and I had a very lengthy conversation, and by the end, she could see, you know, what, what I was trying to say is that it doesn't matter what relationship you're in, what kind of relationship you are in, if you're in it, it's got benefit to you. You're there for a reason. Your soul has agreed to that, and that's when you can remember that every relationship, even the hard ones, are significant because your soul has agreed to them for a purpose. It seems to me that the narcissistic relationship, as much as it can seem similar to a twin flame relationship, it still provides a type of, of contrast that once, once the narcissistic relationship has been experienced, it provides just enough contrast that allows you to recognize the twin flame relationship yeah. more and be able to tell whether whether something's just being a mirror or whether it's being an unhealthy bit. Totally. Yes. So the mirror portion that tends to come from the twin flame side is designed to teach you about things from within you. That's why it's a mirror. You get to see within yourself. The, nar the narcissistic relationship teaches you about external influence. So when you learn so when when you learn what is external influence and what is internal influence then you learn the the, the signs of more of the narcissistic relationship versus the mirroring relationship no matter how hard it feels because the mirroring relationship is meant to teach you where the other one's meant to to describe a contrast. Hmm. That's My take. that's the key word that's the word to end on contrast. We need the contrast. Would I recognize the blessing of this connection had I not been in a narcissistic experience for six years? I wouldn't. 
probably not near to the degree. I mean, almost every day I think, God, I'm so grateful. Like, wasn't it just the other day I said to you something about, about I'm grateful what a peaceful life we have? Yes. Yeah. I didn't and have I could, that in my narcissistic relationship. Not at all. And we didn't have it in our early years no, either. We, didn't. we we had a we had all sorts of conflict. It was it was still very similar to this. Without it, the it explosive is. arguments, we we were fighting all the time. We were at each other all the time with frustration. Not mean yeah. words, but there was still there was tons of frustration. There was enough to break us apart. Yep. So, yeah, without our without our karmic relationships. Without our corners of narcissism that it that it came trampling through our lives, uh, we wouldn't have had that contrast to understand the difference. Yeah. Nor would I have the growth. My karmic relationship was the most growthful relationship I've ever had. And to answer the previous question where I said know yourself, that relationship taught me to know myself inside and out. I knew my feelings. I knew my body. I knew everything about myself because of that relationship, because I had to dig deep within me. So there is huge benefit to every relationship. So I encourage people to not worry so much about the labels and just allow every relationship to be what it is. That does not mean though, and I've said this before, I'll say this again, that doesn't mean you put up with abuse. It's not, oh, I'm in this relationship, it's teaching me things, okay, I'll, I'll deal with the verbal abuse, the physical abuse, absolutely not. That's part of your lesson is to say no, set boundaries, start taking care of yourself, be assertive. Some people don't recognize abuse. But when they learn to recognize abuse, that relationship has now taught them what they needed to learn. Exactly. Time to move on. Exactly. And it teaches you to never put up with that crap again. You, you get that voice and you say, no more. Ta-da. Ta-da. So, we're going to leave it at that. I'll end it on an intense moment, but yes, we'll we'll do another video, or I will do. I don't know. We'll decide if I, it's going to be a me video or an us video. But I still got another another masculine video yes, to you do. do. We got lots of videos coming I up. Know. We every time we turn around and have a spare hour in a day, we should be considering putting out another video because we just are surrounded by material all of a sudden. We had a couple of quiet months. Quiet mm -hmm. months are over. <laughs> So on that note, we're going to say goodbye so Rob can go play badminton. Yeah. <laughs> I got a 25-minute drive and 23 minutes to get there. I won't get a speeding ticket. There's no penalty for being late. That's right. So we love you guys. Thank you for your great questions, and we will be back with more. Bye for now. Bye.